and stuff dripping out and bodies disintegrating, that it's so outrageous that it is cartoonish. And I don't think that people think for a second that they're going to run into those monsters on the street. I can remember going to see the beast from 20,000 Fathoms when I was a kid, and when the dinosaur picked up those policemen and sort of chewed them up and spit them out, I knew what was happening. Uh, the fact that the blood didn't flow or the fact that the effect wasn't done quite as realistically as the effects in Dawn of the Dead didn't quite... I don't think that makes a difference. I don't think that would have made a difference. I think that at the same age, had I seen Dawn of the Dead, I would have been just as delighted, and I would have been there cheering. I happened to be the kind of kid that wasn't scared by those things, and it didn't really give me nightmares. The things that gave me nightmares were the prospect of bombers coming over and the prospect that the Russians had the bomb, which John Cameron Swayze told me one night. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's the stuff that terrified me. a bit too much, body after body with no head, head after head with no body. Don't you go too far? Uh, it's a question of what's too far. I don't think I go too far at all. In fact, I, I'm always looking to try to deliver more because I'm playing, the film is played for the fans and whatever the critics of this kind of stuff say, they're going to say it whether I do one effect or 20 effects or 30 effects and people that don't like it are never going to like it and I don't expect them to like it and uh, it, it doesn't matter. 97 x ray one Action. People go to see a bloody film to see bloody scenes. Is that sick? I don't think it's any more sick than people's attraction to the Indianapolis 500 in, in the hopes of seeing uh, an exploding car or someone's uh, actual limbs getting spread all over the asphalt. Uh, I think that's sicker. I think his special contribution, I think the one he should be proudest of, is that he did it in Pittsburgh and he did it cheaply. And that encourages people to make movies outside of the Hollywood mainstream, which I think is a wonderful thing. I'd like to see what we call regional filmmaking. Romero's one of regional filmmaking's pioneers. He's made all nine of his features right here in his own little Hollywood on the Monongahela. The physical distance from Hollywood does help us to be independent. People don't come here on junkets very often. They don't visit the set every day. So th there is a little less interference that way. The further away you are, the less likely someone is likely is, uh, the, the less likely someone is to show up and say, gee, I don't like the, uh, the color of that person's costume. Or So there, there are day-to-day -day interferences, I think, that we escape simply by being far away and in a place that most people don't think of as high on their list to visit. Uh, <laughs> uh, while uh, uh, we, we don't want people to think that what goes on in George Romero Romero's movies is, is an accurate portrayal of day-to-day -day life in Pennsylvania. Uh, those kinds of things uh, are entertainment. Uh, they, Pennsylvania's governor, Dick Thornburg. And the fact that they are making uh, a substantial addition to the growth of the movie industry in our state, providing jobs for people, revenues for, for uh, uh, local governments and for uh, the state uh, is a positive thing. The governor's proud to count Romero as a Pennsylvanian. I've got four sons, and we've always been great movie fans, and our favorites are always the horror films. We go back to the original Dracula and the original Frankenstein. And when Night of the Living Dead came along with its locale in western Pennsylvania while we were living there, we were entranced. You haven't tried to be a zombie yet in one of Romero's movies, have you? No, I think probably a zombie would not uh, uh, be the type of portrayal that uh, would... Uh, would be my forte. I think uh, something a little more distinguished for the governor. Lead, leading man type role. Leading man type yeah. role, yes. Do some fans uh, make it to, to meet you and maybe get a, a little part in the Oh, movies? they do, yeah. People come from everywhere to be zombies. I mean, a lot of fans come from all over the country to be zombies. It's, it's incredible. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's delightful, really. Everyone wants to be a zombie. Everyone wants to be a zombie that is particularly damaged. Everyone wants to be a zombie that gets to eat someone else. Show of hands here, zombies. Zombies. Romero's version of a Hollywood cast party takes place in a Pittsburgh tavern. Where else? They tell me you were special zombies. What, what's a special a featured, zombie? A featured zombie is one who bites out a throat. You mean not everybody gets to do that? No, no. But whenever we were shooting the film, I bit out the fake throat, and then, in order to have me chewing something, they gave me spam dipped in fake blood. I would rather have chewed the throat. No, aren't you embarrassed doing all this? No, I love Shit, it. This is my life. What are you talking about? Why do you love it? I got to get my head blown off, and it was it was uh, it was scary. It was like going into an operating room because George sat me down in a chair and my eye was blinded and he very quietly said, Now Don, we're gonna have to detonate the plug that's in the back of your head and the blood.
blood will shoot up out of your eye. And it was, it was like, it reminded me of surgery because all these specialists were all around. One of the guys in special effects said the next movie should just be brunch for the dead. So just have bodily parts and just be doing it. Now, do you bribe George to get the special zombie role? Oh, yeah. I told him I'd do anything. Oh, I would have done You did? It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you you would have eaten any limb. Oh, you got it. <laughs> any part. <laughs> I always feel like uh, we're not finished until we show the movie in Pittsburgh because this is the gang that made the movie. Uh, I, I feel like I always have to emphasize the warning about this film. There, there, are, uh, there are three and a half minutes of terribly ugly things in this movie. Uh, for the most part, you can see them coming and, and you can close your eyes, but anyone that feels a desperate urge to flee the room is, is welcome to do that. Um, and, and we'll all understand. <laughs> uh, other than that three and a half minutes, it's, uh, I like to say it's a great big bundle of music and laughs. <laughs> Day of the Dead opened this summer. Romero says it's an old-fashioned adventure film about good guys, bad guys, and dead guys. Practically everyone's a zombie by now. He's run out of ideas of what to do with his zombies. He just sticks them in a cellar this time and runs them around for two hours. I think he should stop now. I think he's sort of trapped commercially thinking, I better do what the public wants and give them another ghoulie one. I think George Romero probably has enough talent to make a whole, wholly different kind of film, and I'd like to see him do it. I'd love to do some fairy tale things. I'd love to do some lighthearted, purely straight out lighthearted things. George Romero presents Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, I don't know if it'd sell, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to do it. Humpty Dumpty's pretty violent, you know. Well, he fell off the wall. Of course, you'd party. probably blow him up. Well, uh, blow he, his head he up. He did blow up. He blew apart. He blew into <laughs> a million pieces. They couldn't put him back together again. That's not so different from what happens in Day of the Dead, actually. <laughs> <laughs>